tempo, you are the voice, we are your soul, you are our God, we are your people, you are the light, we stand in know. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Let's stand on our feet and give the Lord a hand cap of praise. For he didn't have to do it, but he did. I want to say welcome to all of you that are here. And all of you that are listening to us on Facebook. We thank God for allowing us to come together one more time. Not only that, but he allowed us to come together to sing together, pray together, shout together. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. What a, what a great time to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you. The Lord is good. We thank him for one more chance. Thank him for just one more time for allowing us 
to come together. He allowed us to come together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to come together one more time, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to pray together one more time, Whoa. one more one more time he allowed us to pray together one more time one more time one more time he allowed us to sing together one more time one more time, one more time, he allowed us to sing together, one more time, we're going to shout, one more time, one more time, he to shout together one more time, oh, one more time, one more time. He allowed us to shout together one more time, one more time. One more time, he allowed us to come together. One more time, one more time, one more time, he allowed us to come together. One more. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory, glory. Listen one more time. Those words mean so much. He allowed us to come together one more time. Father, I get fooled when I get before your people and have anything to say that you give me. Father, I bring uh, uh, your word today, and it comes out of the book of Luke, the 18th chapter, the 15th through the 27th verse. And it reads, and they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them, but when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid me not, for of such the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, why callest thou me good? None is good, save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, all these I have kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Ye lackest thou one thing, sell all that you have, and distribute unto the poor, and
and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw what he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come to you once again uh, just to talk to you, Father, just to let you know that we thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and all your blessings, Father. We thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you for all that you allow us to participate in, Father, for without you, nothing is possible. And Father, I'm always, uh, it's always on my heart to talk about the kids. It's always on my heart to ask that you would continue to bless them in a special way. Father, I pray that you would take our youth and help them, uh, help to grow them, Father, help them to understand that uh, you are the way. There's no one without you. There's no other way. Father, and I pray that you would, in turn, take our young adults and show them a different way, Father. Let them know that the flesh is weak, but there's only strength of you. And Father, we ask that you would be with our elderly uh, as we try to share with the, those that are coming behind us, Father. That's our responsibility, and we thank you for that. Father, and in my talking to you, I say that nothing is possible without you. Uh, we depend on you. We love you. We magnify you. We glorify you, Father, and we, we just want to say thank you. And Father, when we've done all that we can do here, we pray that you would keep us in your care, under your wing. And Father, and I pray for those that are sick and shut-ins, Father. Uh, I pray that you would touch them in a mighty way, Father. Uh, touch them in a way that they know that their help comes from you. And Father, as I pray for our leadership here, Father, I pray that you would impart the wisdom uh, and knowledge. Give him a word, Father, so that he would uh, know how to feed us, Father. Anoint him, bless him indeed, Father. These things I continue to pray daily, Father, and I thank you for it. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
How many of you have something to be thankful for this morning? Come on, stand to your feet and give God some praise. Come on, he's worthy. Anybody know him to be worthy? I said he's worthy. He's worthy of all our praise. He heard somebody say he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Come on, come on, come on. He's worthy. He's worthy. Somebody say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. For your blood. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for restoring me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for the blood that you shed on Calvary's cross. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your grace, and God, we thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your presence, even right now, God. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for that special touch. Thank you for that burning on the inside, even now. God, I decrease that thou might increase. I pray now, God, that your people will not see me, but see you not hear me but hear you god i stand on your word that your word would not go forth and return void for the purpose for which it was sent god we are in this place in your presence and i pray now god that your holy spirit will fall fresh i pray now god for a refilling in the name of jesus god we thank you we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands. Amen. 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 This morning, uh, the text uh, can be found in the fourth chapter of Acts. 31st through the 33rd uh, verses. Amen. Reads, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. And I'm going to use as a subject uh, this morning, living life powerfully. Living life powerfully. Amen. How many of you are ready to uh, go about life uh, experiencing it differently than you're experiencing it today. Anybody ready for a change? Amen. Think about it. Isn't, it. isn't it about time that you children of the most high God, king's kids, begin to live like royalty? Amen. Luke, the 10th chapter, in the 19th verse says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Power. Ephesians, the third chapter, and the 20, 20th verse is now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power, power, power that worketh in us. You know, it's, 
it, it, it's time out for the body of Christ to continuing to live and behave as if uh, our destiny is to be tossed to and fro. You know, we've been charged with a task. And really, we've been given what we need for the task. And then we don't have to do anything alone. We have each other, the church. But, but listen to uh, the task. Uh, Mark, the 16th chapter, 15th through the 18th verses. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You know, and, and uh, when we are busy being about the work of the Lord, the, the Bible says that signs shall follow us. You know, to be convicted of a crime requires some evidence. And the question I want to ask you this morning is, is there enough evidence in your life to be convicted of being one of them that believe? You know, saints of God, there's a lesson for us, this church and this text. You know, and I'm always amazed and in awe of the early church, the power that it possessed. You know, in, in studying, I'm, I'm in awe of how God used them to his glory. When you, when you think about the fact that 3,000 were saved on one day, and then 5,000 were souls were saved on another day, uh, the Lord added to the church daily uh, that the church was known for miracles, amazing growth, and, and then the fact that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. It, it, it was something different about that early church. You know, most believers want that same kind of power and the ability to use the power that the early church had. But in some ways, you know, we possess far more than they did. We got nice sanctuaries, enough money to do the things that we want to do, amazing technology and the freedom to worship God as we please. And if we're honest, however, we're experiencing a power shortage. See, the early church knew uh, the power of prayer, and then they practiced the power of love. You, you knew who they were because they were marked by the power of proclamation. They were preaching people. But in this text, Peter and John had been thrown in jail for preaching the gospel and healing a lame man in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that you might imagine that God had been greatly glorified in the hearts of the people because of the miracle. You know, we say we walk by faith and, and not by sight, but when we see something, hallelujah. Uh, those in charge of the city wanted to punish Peter and John, the messenger. You know, sometimes it can be hard being the messenger. I I'm the messenger this morning. Don't lock me up. Don't muzzle me. Don't ignore me. Don't tune me out. God stepped in on Peter and John's behalf. And they were released with a strong warning. Peter and John then went to church. You know, they realized a, a warning. You know, some of us don't realize warnings when we, when we receive them. Yeah, he, he warns us in, in ways, and then we feel like it was our doing that moved us past that critical point in our lives. 
But Peter and John recognized the warning, and they, they went to church talking to somebody. But Peter was to preach, and, and he knew what kind of service uh, it was going to be, and so he, he pulled something from the book of Psalms. Acts, the fourth chapter in the 25th verse, he says, Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? You know, Peter asked a powerful question. He says, Why do the heathen rage? You know, that, that question stands today. Hey, why, why are men killing each other? Why, why are some just destined to bully, destined to oppress. Why can't our votes count? Why, why is there still discussion over who won the presidential election? Peter began to preach this message to them about God and purpose. People were listening. There wasn't any sleeping or texting. Uh, Peter was excited, telling them about God's purpose. Uh, he, he said, brethren, if you just pursue God's purpose, God is going to bless you with a divine destiny. God's going to show you how to come out of this. I know you've been battling. I know you, you've been persecuted. I, I know it seems like there's trouble on every hand, but God is going to reveal to you just how to be delivered. You know, we've been studying over uh, the last month, uh, really, and, 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 and praying over this last year about breaking away and how to be free, how to enjoy the promises of God, how to truly experience the newness of life. Joy unspeakable. And I need to tension this morning. But, but the very thing that began to occur as Peter preached has to begin to happen in our midst. The Bible said that when they heard the word, all of a sudden, they begin to believe what God had said about them. And I can't impress upon you enough that you got to believe that you're coming out of your dilemma. You, you got to believe that you're coming out of your trial and, and your test. Not only that, but you're coming out with a passing score. Are, are there any believers in the house this morning? Uh, do you know what happened when, when Peter got through preaching about God's purpose in their lives? Uh, the Bible said they got together and prayed. Amen. The, the, that, that first verse of the text, the 31st verse is, and when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Do we have any praying people in the sanctuary? And I know that, that most of us understand the importance of prayer. Men ought to always pray. And I'm grateful for the hundred or so people who call in for prayer on Tuesday evenings because there's nothing more important in our Christian walk than prayer. Something happens when church folk pray together. Amen? Amen. And if I can get somebody to turn this hair off, I'll be so grateful. But in this text, the church got together and began to pray. They prayed, they prayed, and they prayed some more. They, they prayed until the whole house was shaken. They prayed until the foundation began to tremble. And, and when you're praying for God's deliverance, you can't be praying one of those cute, and sophisticated prayer. See, when you're in a desperate situation, that, that intellectual prayer won't be enough. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, thou 
everlasting father, ruler of the universe, great I am, in the name of Jesus, prince of peace, I come unto you, uh, most auspicious one, through the torn veil that was rent in the temple. I lay before you the desires of my most fragile heart, knowing that thou art always mindful of the saints, thou most merciful God. When things are upside down, you need one of those, help me, Lord. I need you now. You're hurting deep down on the inside. You don't have time uh, trying to impress people, a bunch of religious know-nothings. You, you got to pray until your will begins to line up with his will. Till your thoughts become God's thoughts. And your ways become his ways. Somebody say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, we pray, but we don't pray like the early church prayed. See, we pray when we are shaken. But they pray to be shaken. We pray, but not fervently. We pray, but not specifically. We pray, but not on one accord. We pray, but not as a group. We like to be led in prayer. Amen? But sometimes that's not good enough. Sometimes our, our problems and our, our circumstances are so complicated that we can't even ourselves understand or even explain it. In other words, we're in a mess, and we don't even know how we got here. And that's why Paul said, Romans 8, chapter 26, verse, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make it intercession for us which groanings which cannot be uttered. Paul uses the term infirmities. He, he's speaking of our weaknesses, speaking of our not knowing how to pray about the mess we find ourselves in. We need help, and we don't even know what help we need. Now, I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how much of the Bible you know. I don't care how much of it you're able to quote. And, and, and maybe you're the, one of the ones they turn to when a prayer is needed. But there's going to come a time and a situation where you are just lost for words. True saints of God, if we are true, ser truly serious about uh, submitting to his will, we have to rely and depend upon the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Romans 8, chapter 27, verse says, And he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. Uh, they, they prayed. And the place where they were assembled began to shake. God, God filled them with the Holy Ghost. And they started speaking the word with boldness. Well, where did this boldness come from? When the disciples prayed, uh, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Power from on high. And if we're looking for power... In these days, uh, we have to learn how to pray as a church, corporately. You know, I, I like the prayer calls, but we need to get back together uh, praying at prayer meetings, an altar call, when, when there is a need within the church. Uh, the church should bow as a body and wage war together. See, the early church knew how to pray. We need to learn how to pray. And we learn to pray by praying. We learn to pray by asking God for the impossible and believing that he'll send it to us. We learn to pray by reading the word of God and then praying it back to him in faith. 
early church had the power of, of God on them because they pray together. When they call, God heard and he answered. And how many of you know that God is still in the prayer answering business? Amen. 32nd verse of the text says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Uh, the text highlights for us that they were a church that, that got along with each other. Amen, somebody. The uh, text says they were of one heart and of one soul. Uh, they, they were not a people who were only concerned about themselves. They, they were consumed by the needs of the lost. Uh, they had a servant's heart. John, the 13th chapter. 34th and the 35th verse is a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. And by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. When we love one another as we should, and when we Walk in unity as we should. It, it lets the world around us know that the profession of our faith is real. And 33rd verse in the text says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. But verse thirty. Uh, three tells us that great power rested upon the apostles. Their, their preaching and their witness were effective because God empowered their preaching and he blessed the proclamation of the gospel. There's a whole community around us that needs to hear about Jesus. No matter where you go, you'll find lost people who need to hear the message of salvation. My brothers and my sisters, it's our duty, the church, to tell them about Jesus and what he can do for them. Amen. Allow, allow me to try to sum this up. Uh, there can be no powerful living without prayer. Those of us who are in the body of Christ, Christian believers, should be marked by our love for one another. And then, with power, it is our responsibility to claim, proclaim the gospel, to go out into the, the highways, the byway, and tell a dying world that Jesus saves. Amen. Let me go back to the 31st verse. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. Spake the word of the Lord with boldness. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Ghost. My brothers and my sisters, as I close this morning, Oh, Lord, allow me to describe how to live a life of power. First of all, you need to speak the word, the word of God, with boldness, not with your feelings, because your feelings will get the best of you, not with your problems. Because your problems will overcome you. Not with your situations. Because you can drown right in the midst of your situations. And you need 
to set your mind on the promises of God and God's word and begin to speak the word of God all on and speak it with boldness. You can't let circumstances and situations determine how you feel or dictate how you behave or establish your mindset or how you think. Hold on, stop believing what other folks say and start believing what the word of God says. My God, I said my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want by his stripes I am healed. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Psalm 27, 1 through 6. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked happen. Even my enemies and my foe came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me in this wheel, I still be confident. And one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me and he shall set me upon a rock and now shall mine head be lifted above my enemies that are all around me and therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy and I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Somebody ought to give him praise. Glory to God. I thank you, Jesus. I thank your Holy Ghost. Sometimes we become frustrated and we go into hiding because of our struggles. Hold on, I need to tell somebody that it's not over. The best is yet to come because we've come too far to turn back now because God, God has blessed us with too many blessings. He's healed us, healed us already too many times. He supplied too many of our needs. He's changed too many of our situations. God has lifted too many. 
burden for us to turn back now. God already has been protecting us through the storms of life. I ought to have some witnesses in here. But we got a race to run, a message to proclaim, and we're not alone. The scripture said that we're in Christ. We have a friend on who we can call on. Anybody ever had to call on him? Hallelujah. We have an arm on which to lean. I don't know about you, but I'm leaning. I said I'm leaning on his everlasting arm. We have a hand. Glory to God. A hand which will guide, guide our footsteps in the way may seem dark. But I don't have to worry because he's leading me. And I've got my hand in his hand and he's guiding me footstep by footstep in Christ we have a presence glory to God talking about the Holy Spirit and the Spirit he comforts me and he gives me strength he's my voice when I don't know what to say we have an assurance that encourages us that everything, I said it encourages us that everything is going to be all right. And we have a resource that never fails. God, somebody ought to give this testimony. God, I said God. God never fails. I thank you, Jesus. I thank your Holy Ghost. There may be problems, perplexities, pressures, provocations, perpetuations, peculiarities, and even some persuasions. But with God's power, I said with God's power, the power of prayer, joining in with your fellow saints proclaiming the gospel speaking the word boldly you can make a difference if there anybody in this place that's ready to run on and see what the end's gonna be but I've got good news for you hallelujah that God already knows what the end is going to be you see, he starts from the end, and he establishes it. And then he goes and puts a process in place. He puts a procedure in place that makes sure that you and I are going to be in the place where we need to be. Sometimes he causes pressure, and you got to know that that pressure is a changing kind of pressure. That pressure is a performing pressure. And what does it perform? That it makes you into being the man and the woman, the girl and the boy that God intends you to be. I thank God for what I've been through. I thank God for what he allowed me to see because I know within my heart huh, he was preparing me for a time such as this. Glory to God. I'm trying to quit. Huh? But in my spirit, huh, I just thought about Job. You see, Job lived huh, before Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He lived before Christ went to the cross. He lived before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He lived before the word of God uh, was bound in what we call the Bible. He lived uh, before there were any churches like we know them today. He lived uh, before there were any modern hospitals or medicines like we have today. He lived uh, before welfare and he lived 
before social security. But even in his time of difficulty, his time of despair, he held on to his faith in Jehovah God. Glory to God. He lost everything he had, but he maintained his integrity. And I heard Job say, even though they slay me, yet will I trust in him. Hallelujah. I need of just a few saints that are willing to trust him, that are willing to stand and give God some praise. Hallelujah where you stand in the presence of the almighty God in the presence of his Holy Spirit begin to speak the word speak the word boldly you speak to him you know where you are you know what you need speak to him speak with power speak it now hallelujah I can't hear nothing. Glory to God. I ought to be hearing some shouting. I ought to be hearing some praises. I ought to be hearing the words that are coming out of your mouth. Hallelujah. strengthen me I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. And strengthen me. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. Oh, Lord, yeah. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. I can do all things through Christ 
that strength of me. If it's living right, I can do well. If it's walking right, I can do well. I can do all things to cry that strength of me. Oh, I can win a soul. I can reach my goal. God said in His Word that. That all things are possible. I can do all things to Christ that strengthen me. Oh, I can do all things through Christ. That strengthen me. Sometimes you gotta just speak it boldly. Oh, mm. I can do all things through Christ. That strengthen me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. I can do all things that strengthen me 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 can do all things to Christ that strengthen me. Come on, come on, stand where you are. Just, just stand where you are. Stand where you are. Stand where you are. Stand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can you're able to stand, stand, amen, amen. Just want to ask the question, if you're saved and you know you're saved, you be seated. If you're saved and you know you're saved, amen. Give God a hand clap of praise, amen. 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 Well, I want to... Thank you for not locking me up this morning, amen. Put me in jail, amen. I know we have an announcement uh, coming. Um, I'm ready when you are, Ron. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Bless the Lord. We thank the Lord for the word, Pastor. Uh, our announcement, our announcement, we have one here today. St. Luther, please keep in mind and remind others of our Women's Day. Our Women's Day announcement is that St. Luther will celebrate its Women's Day weekend, August the 7th and 8th of 2021. This is where you clap. Bless the Lord. The theme for this year is Passionate Pursuit of Purpose. 
The thematic scripture comes from Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This event will take place once again beginning on, on August the 7th. Saturday, August the 7th, we will have a panel discussion focusing on whether our choices and actions are helping us to live in God's purpose. And this will be available on Facebook Live. A limited number of in-person spaces will be available, so registration will be required. And our climax will take place on Sunday, August the 8th, 2021. Our guest speaker will be First Lady Michelle Walker of Cherry Grove Missionary Baptist Church. Members are asked to please pay. Amen, amen, amen. Please keep her lifted in prayer as we make preparation for that day. Again, all members are asked to please pay $150 for the assessment and support of Women's Day. Your Women's Day team captain will contact you and envelopes will be available at the table in the foyer. So please be keep in mind and please pick yours up. Please remember to use the envelope for your payment and be sure to include your name and amount on it so that you will receive proper credit. You should, if you should have any questions or concerns, please see any member of the mission ministry. And we would like to ask all mission ministry members, if you are present, please stand at this time so that all persons may see you, know you. And if they choose to do so, come to you. Again, this is our Women's Day announcement. And again, we will celebrate it on Women's Day weekend, August 7th and 8th. Please keep this in prayer. Amen. Pastor Polk, this concludes the announcements. Amen. Amen. You know, I want to take the uh, time to introduce a uh, guest here. I didn't know that they were coming. Uh, Reverend McClellan and his, and his wife, Joanne. Come on, stand. You know, we, uh, Reverend, Reverend McClellan and I served as associate ministers at Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Detroit. And, uh, you know, we were part of that Mississippi crew in Detroit. You know, they called Detroit North Mississippi. But, uh, we were part of that, that, that crew. And uh, surprised and, and happy to learn that he also moved back home to Mississippi. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, you know, he's, he's a... There are not many of them, but he's, he's a good Omega man. There's not many of them. But... This is Kappa House, right? <laughs> Amen. Uh, we, we, can be dis we can be dismissed. Amen. Come on, let's stand. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Father God, you've been faithful. We've called out names on the prayer call. And you've reached out and touched their bodies. And we thank you. But now as we, as we end, we, we call out another name. Uh, Brother Lawrence. And pray, oh God, that you would move as you know how to move. Your word says that you are God of the flesh. The Lord God that healeth thee. Your word says that by your stripes we are already healed. And so we thank you now in advance. And then we pray, God, for these that have gathered here on today. We pray, oh God, that you would continue to wrap your arms around them. And for those who are listening, God, we pray that you would go before them 
and behind them and walk beside them, that you would uh, lead them down the pathway of righteousness, God. Guide in their footsteps, shine on the light on their pathway. And God, we'll be careful to give you the honor and give you the glory. In your precious name we pray. Let us all sing together. Amen. Amen. Just look at your neighbor, wave at them. Amen. Give them that I love them. Look. Amen. Don't hug them. Not yet. Not unless you know for sure that you've been vaccinated and they've been vaccinated. Don't run over them either. Give them a little space. Amen. Set your never leave me. 